Go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to Stokes Go Moon Podcast. My guest today, Nick Foster, is the co-founder of Lyra. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me. Something about Australians and this podcast that they um, keep getting connected with them. That's awesome. Listen, <laughs> mate, you are, in terms of the people who have come onto this podcast, quite still young. You're like 28 years old. Uh, my research says that you started Lyra when you were 24. Most people at the age of 24 don't really even know what they want to do. But yet here we are. Like, how did that come about for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I was pretty fortunate in that, you know, you mentioned Australia. Like, we we do some odd things in crypto and have done kind of historically. And we had a guy who was um, claiming to be Satoshi. His name's Craig Wright. He's still in the news at the moment. And he, his his is his he, house got raided by the, is, the tax office. Yeah, yeah. Is he, he's still, is he Satoshi? Like real? Like on? No, on, no chance. Zero, okay. zero chance. He's, he's <laughs> um, but okay. his his house was like happened to be on a street I'd spent a lot of time growing up near because my one of my close friends lived there, and it got raided by the tax office here. Uh, and so I fell into Bitcoin in like 2015, and then Ethereum in 2016. Um, went off to work in, in finance. And, yeah, uh, always got kept in touch with Ethereum and, and, you know, I worked okay. in options, which, you know, what Lyra is doing, which is the, the project um, I mm-hmm. co-founded and working on currently. Uh, and, you know, when I, we spotted the opportunity to, to build something on Ethereum um, and a, a useful financial primitive at that, uh, I mm-hmm. wanted to jump on it. So that, that was really what, what got it going, but yeah, I've been sort of passively in, in, in crypto for quite a while now. Before we get into what Lyra is, I want to delve deeper into what got you into trading in the first place? Because everyone's mm-hmm. got an origin story. What's yours? Yeah, um, it was actually, so I hated networking at at university. I, I couldn't stand it. And that's um, a bit of a problem. Felt... That's a bit of yeah, a problem, a, right? It, it is a problem. And I, you know, you have all these business school guys. I, I study maths and it's all these like business school guys who go to these drinks for accounting firms and stuff. And it, it just drove me nuts. Um, and now it makes more, a lot of more sense. You start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but there was one company um, that I, they had a networking event on uh, for the mass guys, which was a mm-hmm. poker tournament. I'd grown up playing poker um, with my friends and like kind of studying some of the, what are we counting? Con- are we counting cards? Are we like, <laughs> but I just, any, no. any tricks? Or are you uh, just no good? tricks, just math, just math, uh, just, math. just uh, okay, just math. Yeah, okay. just probability so, and, and yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I I know a couple of poker players, like Quans that are poker players. They're very good. You you do not play against them. They will fleece you. <laughs> they will absolutely fleece you with maths. And I'm yeah. like, uh, like this whole thing about you can go in there with a poker face. No, you can't. They know every <laughs> cal- every probability before the hands even. You know. Okay. So sorry. Go on. No, no, that's that's bang on. And so that, yeah. that was the only networking event that actually attracted my attention. And so I went off to to this poker sort of event, ran, got lucky and ran deep in this tournament they were running and hit it off with the firm, like which was a quant trading like options trading firm called Susquehanna International Group. So that was my oh. foray into, into trading and options was uh, you know, I that was my first job out of out of university awesome so they they basically said oh yes this guy is good with numbers it's like suit. what's that what's the series it's like suits but just for for accountants um so, so so why okay so my logical second question would be why not continue on that journey like go and work for a hedge fund or goldman sachs or one of these guys no, yeah. I mean, I, I went off to work in the US. So I, I started in Australia. Oh, it was okay, you know, went, okay. went to I traded options in out of Philadelphia, actually, which is their headquarters for, for just over three years. Loved it. Honestly, trading Ooh. is so much fun. So like I was right in the middle of the, the sort of meme stock mania three years ago. Um that my desk was playing a pretty big, you know, a, a non-trivial role in that in that whole um 
kind of episode with GameStop and AMC. Yeah, and, um, yeah. It's making a comeback right now. Um, it's kind of giving me some some flashbacks. Okay. Um, but so that was, you know, it was great. I loved it. Had a great time. But um, I, you know, I, as I said, I've always been passionate about Ethereum uh, and trying to like, and and more broadly, like finance, uh, mm. how the world works, how money moves around, improving that. And mm -hmm. you know, to me, I think the 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 biggest unlock of the blockchain is it's the only meaningful way you can you can mount a challenge to what's currently ossified and exists as the the current financial system, and that's what always drew me to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I first heard about Ethereum, and and yeah, so combining my option skills with the passion for like to trying to change how finance works, and mm -hmm. um, you know, that's how we got to quitting my job in in twenty twenty one. Those three years that you spent in the states did you see something that you didn't know when you were i would say to people you go inside the belly of the beast and you see how the sausages is made do you did you sort of was it a, a wake-up call for you or was it sort of oh, I, I know this is how it works no it was i mean just the sheer scale of the money that flows through um those financial markets how much information um you know, flows through and kind of accrues to different parties within that ecosystem and how hard it is to break in mm. the barriers to entry for every firm, you know, that's kind of involved in the trading process is enormously high. And mm. that's not like a, like a nefarious or sort of like uh, what it is, conspiratorial thing with the firms in that industry. It's just like the natural progression of the, you know, when, when you set up the rules of the game a hundred years ago mm. and it just organically develops over a hundred years, and there's rules that build up around it and there's, you know, tech investment and, you know, it, it just gradually tends to, you know, oligopolistic kind of type structures mm -hmm. where a few players just take an enormous, enormous advantage and it's very difficult to give it up. And um, that was why I saw blockchain, you know, uh. if, if you if you have a system which routes a lot of the traffic, you know, um, through, maybe through options or another product and, yes. you know, on the blockchain and you decide to hike up you know your prices or you try and consolidate your advantage in some ways it's very difficult because you're immediately kept in check by you know the potential to be forked or mm. um you know someone else coming along and, and undercutting you it's, it's it's much more competitive and better for users uh, i think over the long term okay let's get into lara right so you always had a passion for crypto uh kept pace with ethereum so for those that don't know um in layman's terms what is lara yeah, Lyra is the largest on-chain <laughs> options exchange. Um, and so we don't just do options, as options and perps. Um, you can trade them both out of the same account. And the extremely cool thing about Lyra is we can, you know, you can build financial products, payoff structures, um, you know, whether it's to hedge a, a certain asset or to generate yield and come and earn, you know, US dollar premiums on your assets. Mm -hmm. um you can package that up and uh you know kind of offer that to people in a tokenized form through lyra and you know that we have the sort of best off-chain capabilities of, of a centralized exchange with the strong self-custodial on-chain guarantees that you know all of our risk engine um you know margining it's all done on chain you can verify it there's no special privileges and it's all self-custodial so um yeah it's a i think a, a one of a kind in in crypto there aren't many uh, you know, in the space that that have the kind of setup that we do. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we're, we're just starting to really get the engine going and, and beginning to build products for for the wider Ethereum ecosystem and, you know, exporting them as tokens. Are you a coder? Can you code? Uh, <laughs> it depends who you ask. Uh, so <laughs> if you ask the okay. engineers, they will tell you no. I got, I kind of, I, I, you know, grew up and like learned um, a lot of the statistical kind of programming mm -hmm. languages like R and, um, you know, a bit of Python. I did some full stack web development at some point okay. um, and enough to get us going. I, I did a little bit of coding for our version one and quickly got kicked off by our CTO, um, you know, probably like four months in uh, and he just took Good. over. So I, I was responsible for a lot of the early like financial yeah. engineering decisions um, and, and things like that and have been really going forward. Okay. But are you speaking about an engine? And so whenever I hear the term engine, I think of, okay, there's code involved, right? So you had to have an idea or you guys had to have an idea of, okay, cool. This is one we want to build. How did you set up finding the people to sort of come with you on this journey and to 
help you because you didn't do it on your own. That's, I think, a fair assessment at this stage. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Uh, absolutely not. Didn't do it on my own at all. So I, you know, we had a three. I have three co-founders. Um, okay. So, um, one of them, two of them were. If you're familiar with, have you heard of Synthetics? Um, like yes, one of the yes, original yes, yeah, yes, 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 Synthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they were early, like, like kind of on the founding engineering team for Synthetics, um, mm. which at the time was Haven, which was a stable coin back in 2017, I think, or 2018. They ICO'd. It was really early. Um, and so they were both engineers there. One of them, Mike, was on the white paper, um, and that's you know who who we got going with. And then Jake, who I I knew from from high school actually, um, he was uh, working as an engineer at at, at Meta, like WhatsApp mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And I pulled him in to help us build our first sort of front end UI. Um, okay. And from there, we've kind of drawn on our collective network to find, you know friends like you know who's helped us with the financial engineering phds um quants and we've also hired a lot through discord just from people wow. who found us organically once we went live in in 2021 um and you know read our white paper like what we were doing uh and it's honestly been one of our best hiring funnels not bad for a guy that does that says he doesn't like networking it seems to me that you're pretty good at it so uh, it must have been yeah. a hell of a poker tournament my friend <laughs> <laughs> because because in this day and age, right, that's why I'm so interested in where people find each other because you get you get these people, I want to build something or I want to do this. And then it's like, mm, okay, now where do I go? So that this people, well, this person is not going to stab me in the back. I'm not going to get fleeced or he's not going to attack my idea. That's why I'm asking like networking is pretty important and like the sort of the people where you get them. Yeah, to totally. And I have come around to networking, just not okay. that it was just told to me in university as this thing where you, you put on a suit and you go talk to a bunch of accountants and, and consultants oh, at yeah. a place that serves canapes on small plates. And um, and it's, it's totally really different, totally different in the real world. Totally different. And thank God for that. <laughs> so I d did some research and you must help me if I'm wrong, but you recently parted with Etherthai and Swell Network. That's right. Yeah. And offering um, a high API on liquid restacking tokens. What's that all about? Yeah, so I think this is kind of the start of our, our next phase of, of, of what Lyra can be. So we built, as I said, this engine where you can come and trade options and perps um, and we can manufacture and create payoffs that represent like a yield bearing strategy um, or like an insurance strategy. So you can hedge downside on, on maybe ETH or, or different assets you can come trade on Lyra. Okay. Um, and this is one of them. So for us, you know, the liquid restaking and the eigenlayer ecosystem. So, you know, yeah. ETH, it's staked. And now, you know, it's staked to secure the Ethereum network and then restaked. So to potentially rent out that network of operators who can go and secure other functions, other decentralized applications. So things like maybe oracles, bridges, potentially Lyra itself in the future at some point. Um, and for that, um, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a, a lot that a lot of these restaking protocols are trying to, um, you know, reward people who are performing that service with with yield. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, like one of the early ways that they're trying to differentiate is making it an attractive place to hold their token while they begin to, you know, assemble their networks and bootstrap network effects. We can come in and offer them and tokenize and build products and financial products uniquely using options on top of that collateral on top of their tokens to make them useful um, mm. to generate you know, premiums for their users in the meantime with some risk like there's some trade-offs right so mm. potentially always there's always risk like yeah. there's always trade-offs particularly with options um, but it's it's the kind of payoff that we we think there's a lot of demand for um, we're, we're just about to hit 10 million TVL in, in under a week of, of being live with these vaults. Um, so, wow. you know, we're confident that we can grow that to, you know, 20, 30, 40 million over time uh, and really start to show what we can do for all of these projects who need sustainable yield in a, in a responsible way too, right? Like in a non-inflationary yeah. way. Yeah. Because there's non, lots of... In a non-FTX way. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of um, sort of sleight of hand games that can be played in crypto with token uh. supplies and locks and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why, like, if, if you look to how traditional finance has functioned, those, like, 
you can avoid doing that mm. by you know, you know shifting risk from people who are willing to take it uh in you know in response for in return for yield and, and that's mm. what options do really really well so uh that's kind of what we're trying to do here and um you know we're we're going to expand from from ether finance well as well they're great partners and we'll build those those products for them and hopefully improve their ecosystems that's awesome the the ecosystem is expected to double in the next couple of years like what are your prediction for the future of DeFi and crypto in general yeah um i think like taking like a a, a really big step back mm. um just imagining the setup in, in you know like over like a 10 15 year time horizon there's like two competing systems there's the traditional system which is very very slow to upgrade it takes years to implement a change i think they're about to change from t plus two to t plus one they switch from t plus three to t plus two settlement mm -hmm. so like this is how long it takes to settle a trade right like it can often yes yes yes, yes, yes. it's three days no two days it's going to one day but that whole process takes half a decade a decade right crypto is this open network where people can come and you know join and they do and they sign up and they develop things every single day you can spin up an asset transfer or like a value transfer protocol like by forking uniswap in 10 minutes yeah in the same way that it would take you years to do if you were trying to go through the processes in traditional finance around the world to go and set that up and i think the velocity um, at which DeFi moves is is often lost when you're sort of really in the in the weeds. But uh, an open source system sort of building upon itself, I, I can't really see it losing over a 10 to 15 year time horizon. Um, so I think more specifically, the way that's starting to manifest now, and we're going to come back around to it, is mm -hmm. more and more assets are being tokenized, um, you know, real world assets. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to continue to build out um, you know, infrastructure, like real financial infrastructure atop Bitcoin and ETH and the sort of derivatives and the bonds that emerge from them. Um, I think, st you know, staking changed the game two years ago um, with with ETH shift to proof of stake. And I, I think we'll continue to see a number of, um, you know, sustainable products built around those yields. Man, that's such a mouthful and such an interesting time to be alive because it feels like this truly generational shift in finance from... You know, the old God to the new God, people that are coming from traditional finance into crypto saying, hey, we there's a better way or a more transparent way to do this. And we're going to we're going to build it now. 100 percent. Yeah. Um, and I think it, you know, it, it might take longer depend or shorter, depending on, you know, what certain regulators or, uh, you know, what certain, you know, how capital is allocated within the space. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't see it. It, it, it missing over a long enough time horizon awesome nick thank you so much for joining me today if the listeners want to connect with you and find more out, out more about lyra where can they do that yeah at lyra finance on twitter or lyra.finance is the website um and yeah you'll you'll find me i think somewhere along the lines there um, <laughs> somewhere you'll find nick somewhere we put the links in the comments to our listeners peace love and prosperity we'll catch you in the next one
love where finance is free Where dreams and dollars find the key Defy options, trading's the new dawn With Lyra leading, we are drawn